Welcome to the Virtual Realms YouTube channel. I'm Ranger One, and today's episode of Archibestiary is going to take a look at, well, possibly two creatures the Dunkelosteus and the other creature that was brought in around the same time, as far as sea dwellers go, the Eurypterid. Now, in reality, the Dunkelosteus lived in the late Denovian period, about 380 to 360 million years ago, and it is considered to have been an apex predator. It died off during the transition from the Denovian to the Carboniferous period, leaving no descendants behind. It reached a length of up to 10 meters, or 33 feet in length, and weighed over three and a half tons. Its unique name, Dunkelosteus, is derived from, well, from David Dunkel of the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, and the Greek word osteus, meaning bone. Primarily because the Dunkelosteus didn't have teeth, per se. Instead, its biting mechanism was made up of two pairs of sharp, bony plates that were extensions of the jawbone, which sharpened themselves by grinding against each other. They were capable of generating a bite force rivaling that of a T-Rex, and it was the strongest bite of any fish ever. Now, if that wasn't scary enough, the bite was also very fast. It was due to the way the jawbone was constructed and the four hinges that made it all work. It was among the first vertebrates to use rapid mouth opening to create a suction to pull in fast-moving prey. Normally, a fish has either a very strong bite or a very fast bite, but Dunkelosteus had both. They also may have been among the first vertebrates to internalize egg fertilization. So, as primitive as these creatures may seem, for their time, they were fairly advanced. The specific species we know in ARC is Dunkelosteus loricoruptor. Loricoruptor literally meaning chest armor breaker. As one might expect, the Dunkel is heavily armored, especially in the head. But this also makes it very slow, and it has a poor turning radius, meaning that if you can keep its head toward the enemy, it will take little damage, but it can be difficult to keep it in that position. In fact, one of the most effective ways to tame or kill one if you're unmounted is to get inside its turning radius or kite it. But you have to be careful because its bite can do a tremendous amount of damage. Of course, you can also lure it into a cave to take it out, but what's the fun in that? If you do kill a Dunkel, it is a source of prime meat and a healthy amount of chitin, which makes sense considering its massive armor plates. If you choose to tame one of these, there are things you should keep in mind. Uh, the kibble that is used to tame a Dunkel is Titanoboa egg, which means well, good luck with that. Titanobo eggs are notoriously difficult to come by. Depending on your server settings, taming a level 120 Dunkel will consume 22 kibble, 103 narcotics, and take a little under an hour and 20 minutes to finish the job. As sea mounts go, they are slow. Extremely slow. So getting anywhere fast is not really an option while you're riding one. They also burn through stamina very quickly, so bumping that and bumping weight might give you the best bang for your buck. They do have a good amount of health, and with that thick armor, they can tank damage pretty well, which makes them very handy to use as a mount while taming other creatures because you can use them to tank the damage from the creature you're trying to anesthetize. Of course, the primary advantage to taming a Dunkel is the fact that they can bite through stone, and they get an excellent return when harvesting underwater oil deposits. Far more than you can get with just a, a regular pick. And their carrying capacity is pretty good too, so this means they're very useful little underwater bulldozers, and that might come in handy when the undersea bases are brought into the game later on. That also means that they can be used to destroy underwater bases that have stone components or current stone holding pens. They also harvest Eurypterids effectively as well, but you need to be very careful if you're going to try that. 
Case in point, this is the maiden voyage I made with this low-level Dunkel that I acquired just for the purposes of making this video. As I was cruising along the ocean floor, I spotted a megalodon around this corner to my right. I wasn't concerned. I had already encountered a couple of megalodons prior to this and had no trouble dealing with them. Everything was fine. But what I didn't know is that megalodon was not alone. As I moved in to engage, what escaped my notice at the time was that this megalodon was accompanied by a group of Eurypterids that were following close behind. You can just see them behind the megalodon now. The Dunkel's area of effect attack is damaging both megalodon and the Eurypterids, and I've taken down two, but what I didn't realize at first was that there were three of them. One of them had escaped my attack. You can see it just down in the corner to the right. It was taking the opportunity to very enthusiastically nail the underbelly of my Dunkel, pumping it full of very potent venom. I ran out of stamina almost immediately because that's another effect of Eurypterid poison. And I found it very difficult to maneuver. I could not get the head of the Dunkel around to attack it directly. So instead I had to try and make a run for it, which when you have no stamina is very difficult to do. And all the while my torpor was going up and up until I was kicked off the Dunkel because the fish was unconscious. Just that fast. The Dunkel could easily have killed all three of those Eurypterids with just a bite or two. But because I got careless and I missed one, the fish was down for the count. Now, I was still trying to gather in what exactly was happening, and I've lost sight of the Eurypterid, and <laughs> I'm looking around frantically because I'm still hearing the sounds of combat going on. Eurypterids have a nasty habit of hiding in the seaweed on the bottom of the ocean floor. It's in there right now, still clawing away and stinging my dunkel, pumping it ever more full of venom. Now, Eurypterids don't seem to do as much damage with their front claws as terrestrial scorpions do, but their venom is even more potent. It would have taken that Eurypterid a long time to kill my dunkel, but eventually it would have. So I had no choice but to do exactly what you see here and thrust my pike repeatedly into this pile of seaweed in an attempt to flush the Eurypterid out, which is highly dangerous because that means it might come after me and one sting would knock me out and it would kill me. Finally, I managed to prod it out and kill it with my first hit, which was a big relief. Since it's going to take quite some time for my Dunkel to regain consciousness, we might as well take the opportunity to cover a few fun facts about the Eurypterid. The largest examples of this species reached over eight feet in length in reality, and they went extinct in the late Permian about uh, 252 million years ago. They were found across the globe, and at some point they made the transition from salt water to fresh or brackish water and some may have ventured up onto the land, much as crabs do today. Now there is some debate as to whether these creatures are more closely related to horseshoe crabs, or arachnids, or the scorpions that they resemble. Their nickname is Sea Scorpion, and they're commonly referred to that way. But that debate rages on. The scientific community can't even agree on whether some of these species may have been poisonous or not, because there's no clear evidence of this. At the very least, it's well known that many species had tail spikes, and that certainly made them dangerous enough. In game, the species we have is Jackalopterus eurypterus, which is the largest of the actual sea scorpion species. They're found in the deepest parts of the oceans that surround the Ark. And that's fortunate, because they are ambush hunters, uh, as well as scavengers. And as I mentioned before, they love to hide in the seaweed beds, often near uh, silica pearls that uh, survivors will be going after on a regular basis. So be careful. There's another reason why it's fortunate that these sea scorpions choose to hang out in the deepest parts of the ocean. And it's not one I think the developers intended, but I'll go into that in just a minute. 
For now, keep in mind that these creatures cannot be tamed, which means they're a little dangerous, but they are worth killing. As you saw when I harvested one, they are a source of a little bit of chitin, some silica pearls, a bit of oil, and the rare black pearls that will be used to manufacture items in the soon-to-be-released tech tier. Fortunately, you don't have to wait until the tech tier is released to make use of them, though. In the patch that introduced these creatures, they also brought in a new recipe called Broth of Enlightenment. Now here's the recipe, so you might want to jot it down. Five woolly rhino horns, and you do need to dismount to pick those up off the body. One black pearl, two of each crop type, and ten mayo berries. Well, and a little bit of water. If you mix all those together and cook them up, you get the Broth of Enlightenment, which provides a 150% experience point buff for 20 minutes. Now, that's a 50% boost in the experience that you earn for everything you do during those 20 minutes. And what makes it really special is that you can also give it to your dinosaur companions. And that means that they're gaining extra experience as well. So if you're trying to level up that great new perfect tame T-Rex that you just acquired, this is an ideal way to, to do so, especially if you manage to stumble across a few Alpha Raptors or Carnos or Alpha Rexes. That would be a huge increase in the amount of experience that you would rake in in a very brief period of time. As a side note to this, the Dunkel, even though mine was taken out fairly easily because it was of such low level, the Dunkel, I believe, does have a slight advantage when it comes to harvesting black pearls from these creatures, probably due to the high base damage that it has, even compared to Megalodons. So they are definitely worth taking after Eurypterids, but be careful. Well, and in the interest of fairness, keep in mind, I didn't have a great deal of time to test the capacity of a Dunkel to harvest those black pearls, so my impression that they're slightly superior in that regard, that could be off. So you may want to test that for yourself, and that may be mitigated by the fact that Dunkels are so slow, it is going to take you longer to find those sea scorpions than you would if you were cruising around on, say, a Megalodon instead. Now, I mentioned earlier that it's a good thing that the sea scorpions tend to stick to the bottom of the deepest ocean floor, where they spawn in groups of two to four around coral or seaweed. Uh, the reason why I say that is because there's a bug in the game that I'm, I'm not sure the developers are aware of at this point in time. I found this out quite by accident. While preparing for this video, and for one that I had planned to do separately for the Eurypterid, uh, I did something just as an experiment that I didn't think would work. Normally, in single player, if you use admin commands to spawn in a creature, as you would often do when creating a video like this, uh, if for no other reason than to get a better look at it, uh, if you spawn in a sea creature, usually if you're above water, it won't work. Or they would die as aquatic creatures do on contact with the air. But when I attempted it, it worked. And the sea scorpion was just fine. It started swimming around just above the beach and didn't seem to care whether it was in water <laughs> or not. Of course, being who I am, I had to experiment with it a bit and see if it would attack other creatures on its own, which it completely ignores all land animals. Well, except for people, of course. Um, and I force tamed it and put it on aggressive just to gauge what the effect of its venom would be on land creatures and it was highly effective on all but the very largest uh, creatures. It really doesn't matter in your gameplay from day to day. Well, I guess unless you have a, a friend who's an admin on a private server or if you're playing single player and feel like force taming some of these creatures to use them to tranquilize animals for taming, which they would probably be pretty good at. Because they do such a low amount of damage, uh, it's very easy to knock creatures unconscious instead of kill them. 
but mainly I'm just including it in this video in case a developer ever happens to see it to point out the fact that they're a little bit bugged and probably shouldn't be able to survive out of water, let alone swim around on dry land. Then again, for all I know, that could be completely intentional and the developers may have future plans for these nasty little creatures. And all you brand new players with your thatch huts on peaceful southern beaches may end up having something a little bit new coming up out of the surf to brighten up your day. Okay, back to the present where 20 minutes have passed and my dunkle has finally woken up from its drugged slumber. This video is starting to go a little bit on the long side. So let me just sum up and say the Eurypterids are going to be a valuable resource. The dunkle, it can be a useful mount. I would tend to use it more as a tank when taming than anything else, but if you plan on spending a lot of time underwater, especially when the new underwater bases are released, and you need oil, the dunkel will be very, very worthwhile. And the stone may come in handy too. Its large carrying capacity is handy, but its slow speed is a definite, definite drawback. There is, of course, as with any creature, so far in Ark, one way to get around that. Just grab a faster fish and have the dunkel follow you. Currently in Ark, if a creature is not being ridden, they don't burn stamina. So the dunkel can effectively sprint after you non-stop. Its low stamina is no longer a factor. Not to say that even a sprinting dunkel will ever keep up with a megalodon, but if you stop once in a while and let it catch up, you can cover ground a whole lot faster than you could if you were riding the dunkel everywhere. That's just something to keep in mind. Well, since these little nippers are pretty well worn out from our day's exertions and we're home now, it's time to put these two to bed. I just want to hold on long enough to thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, well, you might even give that a whirl too. That's all I've got for you for right now. Until I see you again, good hunting. Thanks for watching. I hope you were entertained. If you liked the video, please remember to subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you. And I'll see you next time.